for the worship leader, a hymn of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had slept with Bathsheba. Gracious to me, O God, because of your love, because of your great compassion, wipe away my rebellion, wash out my guilt and purify me from my sin, for I know my rebellions and my sin confronts me continually against you. You alone I have sinned and done what is evil in your eyes, so that you are just when you speak, justified when you pass judgment. I was born in evil, my mother conceived me in sin, but you desire truth in the innermost being. You will make me know wisdom in my secret heart. You will cleanse my sin with hyssop and I will be clean. You will wash me and I will be whiter than snow. You will make me hear joy and laughing. The bones you have broken will dance. Hide your face from my sins and wipe out all my guilt. Make a clean heart in me, O God, and make new within me a firm spirit. Do not cast me from your presence. Do not take from me your Holy Spirit. Bring back to me the joy of your deliverance and let a willing spirit keep me firm. May I teach the rebellious your ways and sinners will return to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud your righteousness. O Lord, you will open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You have no delight in a sacrifice, or I would bring one. You will not accept a burning sacrifice. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a crushed heart, O oh God, you will not despise. So, Sue, so, I, mean, I know you you were once actually even called as a an expert witness in a in a murder inquiry to to talk about this psalm, but but which I suppose, but I mean, this psalm is obviously involved with murder itself, but. I mean, it's had an incredibly rich uh, and complex um, reception um, in both sort of Jewish and Christian, and indeed, you might even say sort of um, Islamic um, mm -hmm. world, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yes, about the murder and uh, uh, trial. Um, if you just, anybody could Google Jeremy Bamba, and then it's the Bloodstained Bible, and you come straight to um, that that bit where where I I was asked to take part in in that. I'll leave the details of that for those who want to discover it. But no, you're right. The the the, the washing idea. I mean, Muhammad um, is understood to have um, uh, have used something like this psalm. A part of it says, oh, God, cleanse me from my sins as a white robe is cleansed from dirt. And that was associated with Muhammad as a daily morning prayer of penitence. So it certainly stretched from Jewish tradition into Christian tradition. You know, the prodigal son quotes a line from the psalm. You've got um, all sorts of different um uh, you know, Lord have mercy on me, quoted again and again in the in the New Testament and in, in Christian tradition. So, yes, it's a monotheistic but interfaith psalm in some ways. We all have the need to re recover from guilt, you know, blood guiltless, which is obviously part of this psalm. Yes, I think yes. maybe even to encompass all that in the in the short time we have. But before we we get on into the into the meat of of the psalm, um, perhaps I could uh, just welcome you those of you who are joining us for this conversation again. And um, if you haven't been um, following these, um, the starting point was uh, in, during lockdown when um, Malcolm wrote this, um, these 150 psalm poems um, responding to the 150 psalms. Um, Sue was, was, uh, was just finishing this uh, her massive three volume um, Books or th books on the um, Psalms through the centuries, which were uh, looking at the reception history of, of all the Psalms, and I was sort of making a selection of some of the um, the Psalm illustrated Psalm translations that I've I've done over the years, and you can um, you can find the archive of uh, uh, of all these conversations. I'm uh, just on the, in below this on. The, uh, there's a page on the website now where we've we put them. In fact, right at the beginning, we did a um, uh, 
uh, Malcolm and I did a conversation about Psalm 51 with Mark Whiting, who'd, who'd um, just been doing a little Grove booklet, which has now been published on the on the penitential Psalms. But we thought it was worth doing, uh, uh, having another go at, at Psalm 51, just because there is so much to to talk about it. Um, the Part, one of the things we didn't weren't able to talk about in that first conversation was the um, the relation of the position of Psalm fifty one to the, all the previous um, psalms, and particularly Psalm fifty. And and last time we were talking, um, Malcolm, about Psalm fifty and and that sort of image that um, of the of the rising sun, which you used very much in your um, response to Psalm fifty. But you 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 take up again. You take up again um, in in. Psalm 51. And, and yes, and I was really struck by it when we were discussing Psalm 50 last time, and Sue was so helpful about the image of the light of the sun on the one hand of radiant glory and the coming of God into his, his, his world, but also that it is an image of judgment, going back to Psalm 19, that the searching heat and light, the sense that the sun exposes what has been done in the dark. And of course, Psalm 51 is a response to a kind of exposure and there's an extraordinary thing as well because you know um you know the little the little script above it tells us that this is this is david you know after he's spoken to nathan and so it goes back to bathsheba and gazing on her um so yeah i wanted as well as as well as picking up the similar the end of the line about he calls you to discern your time and season which i open i wanted i wanted to have that uh that sense uh really I was so glad to hearing Sue last time because in my poem I I quote um, I quote a hymn that we sing uh, which has the line you know his um, his light will judge and judging heal yes because yes. that's this seems to me both a psalm of judgment and of healing um, but uh, yeah so I I, I included uh, in the very first terse it. Um, he calls you, you know, the sempiternal season of his mercy lifts like the sun above your dark horizon. And um, this, I, I just thinking, obviously, you know, Sue, you've been able to do this huge work of where we have texts or images where we can see how this psalm has been received. But it would be wonderful if one could even conceive of the other reception of this psalm, mm -hmm. the number of people in so many times and places of despair, people who've got to the end of their tether, people who are full of self-condemnation and who at the last minute, perhaps mm -hmm. with the very words of this psalm, are able to say, make me a clean heart, O God, you know, mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit with, within me. I mean, this psalm must have been an instrument of grace. I was discussing grace at a and it contrasts to me so much with 50, which is you've, you've used the image of the light and so on. But Psalm 50 ends, of course, with uh, the idea that, well, the whole psalm is about integrity of spirit, but the idea that thanksgiving is counted as sacrifice, whereas yeah. here we have a broken spirit is what's counted as sacrifice. Yeah. Two yeah. very different ideas of uh, not necessarily temple sacrifice, but the yeah. inner heart right with God. And, and it's interesting how they've been put together in such a... Oh, that's, that's very good because, of course... Psalm, Psalm 50 question, you know, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell yeah, you, you know, what's cool. the point of all this. Whereas 51, you've got this, let me get this inner integrity right yeah. first. Yeah. Then I will offer these bulls yeah. on your altar. And in 51, that's all the psalmist has got. It just doesn't feel it can go anywhere yeah. near the temple and the yeah. sacrificial system is pleading. And I think it's, for such a, 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 a psalm, which is in such turmoil, it actually is quite interesting. And verses one to nine are very clear about wash me, wash me, and blot out my sins. You have verses two and seven repeating each other and verses one and nine repeat each other. And then you move from that, to that sort of in, from verses uh, 10 to 17, that sort of sense of a plea for integrity and yeah. it goes on and then of course you have at the very end the idea of the epilogue about sacrifice per se being no problem but the spirit in which it's made it being which is identical to what 50 yeah. has been well, one of the things i don't know I, mean, I i ought to know more because i know a little bit about the development of the english language but in the coverdale you can easily people reading the coverdale aloud in church often misread thoroughly as thoroughly because we want thoroughly but it actually says mm -hmm. thoroughly Wash yeah. me throughly from my sins. Yes, that's true. Not a word I've ever heard, heard used in any other context. But I think it's a fabulous word because it's about going right through me, right through to the heart of who I am, you know, through all my layers of dis yeah. defense, 
to all my false narratives of self-righteousness, get, you know, take all that away. And I think that also relates to the bathing in the sense that you can't ask God to bathe you unless you're prepared to be naked before him, unless you're prepared to take off all these. And I mean, there's a further thing. I think it's an extraordinary thing going on. Once we've been given that little superscription that says this is about David and his sin and it's therefore about yeah, David. It's interesting. Yeah. There's something extraordinary going on where David falls into sin by witnessing the outer washing of a body, that is to say Bathsheba bathing herself in the, on the roof. And what that requires of him then is a washing of the inner man. There's a movement from the outer to the inner there, which I think is 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 very powerful. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting you say the wash me thoroughly, because of in um, um, and Roger will know this in the Hebrew. There's an intensive verb used for wash, absolute and pl. It's called you know wash me. And the Greek and the Hebrew of uh, the Greek and the Latin have picked that up. And Coverdale actually, you know, using the Latin does the same. It's an absolute intense plea to be. Yeah. <sighs> You know, and I love that bit in your in your poem where you actually talk about um, being washed. Uh, let every stain, um, uh, what you confess and what you hide. You know, the yeah. idea of, of of the washing is so complete. We, we can't possibly yeah. confess everything. Yeah. We, yeah, in a sense, that he, know can, the he can wash the One parts thing. that we're not even aware need washing. Yeah. 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 In a way that yeah. we don't. I mean, in the illustration that I did, that was, it was the, very much the washing um, that I wanted to sort of like, I've got two pictures. One was the the washing with the kind of, as it were, angels sort of pouring the water. But then there was also, it, it doesn't exactly occur in the psalm, the, the image isn't used in the psalm, but I had, I wanted them re-clothing him, as it were. Because, yes, uh, no. Which... I just sort of felt was actually part of what this psalm is doing, because it's not actually saying that, you know, uh, that that repentance is this ghastly, horrible thing. It's actually repentance is the way into life. It's a way for to joy and, and to uh, uh, and I, I, I love the way you 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 move from blue to gold in that. Mm. I think the you know the blue of the washing and then the gold there's a kind of being clothed in glory, crowned in glory, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, yes, is, yes, this was something I was able to do in the in the in the new book, which I didn't originally have. Yeah. But I, I, I think that's that's right. It was, it is that there's somewhere I once had a poem which, um, which which sort of says that sort of shame is a is a draft of of fires Scoops. and burns, the lips that doubtfully try to test its heat, but swallowed to the dregs at once. It once it turns to gold that you can drink and breathe and eat, <laughs> and it was yeah. that that idea that actually that that shame is a. Um, is it feels horrible but then actually is 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 the thing that actually changes you and, and makes everything um if you accept it <laughs> um which yeah. i think Islam is, is is um I know, I know it. yeah um well we seem to be living politically through a series of missed opportunities for <laughs> i have to say um yeah and then for the other thing of course that i brought in um i mean this is a psalm so it would be sung is for many people, and particularly for for a certain kind of um, you know cultivated person, they may never have read the Psalter, but they know that this begins miserere mei deus because they've listened again and again to Allegri's miserere, yeah. and it's always one of the highlights of Ash Wednesday. Certainly at Girton, if we had somebody who could do that high note, that we would hear Allegri's setting of this psalm. And that is also an experience of, of um, almost. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a it's a bathing, but it it's a piercing kind of bathing. It's a kind of um, you know there is something in that the way that note soars and comes down, which is beautiful, but also searching. It kind of reminds one of the soul's depth and height. So of course, I I, I decided you know to incorporate that to actually in the poem I'm advising myself or my reader to, um, you know, bathe in the sheer beauty of that particular setting of this psalm and let it search your soul that way. Your reference to that's interesting because um, in doing this psalm, 
I found I just didn't know how many musical pieces I could actually handle. It's a yeah. song which is rich, rich in musical response and not as rich, interestingly, in um, artistic representation. And it was one of the oh. few psalms where I found myself struggling to find um, really interesting artistic ones, despite the imagery we've talked about and the light and the darkness and so on, and, and Roger's, obviously, image here. But actually... It's the music, and it's as you say, it's Allegra, it's Bach, you know, you 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 name it. It's Pert, you know, Alva Pert. It's yeah, yeah. Macmillan. It, 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 it's just a sequence of people who try and um, Howard Goodall, you know, have tried to reinterpret this according to their own context. Yes, and we haven't even got on to Leonard Cohen, but I think we'll, well we yes, <laughs> we'll I, stop I, because there's there's we've run out of time. But so there's so much more we could talk about. But I, I you know, do. Um, do read Sue's book and you'll you'll find um you'll, all that in, in there. So but anyway, perhaps we could um perhaps we could hear the, the Malcolm your poem and, and finish with that. Yeah, thank you. So Psalm 51 Miserere May Deus. He calls you to discern his time and season. The sempiternal season of his mercy lifts like the sun above your dark horizon. Expose your darkness, sing your miserere. His light will judge and judging heal your sin. Then bathe in sheer beauty as Allegri sounds out your penitence and let Christ clean your soul once more, erasing every stain, washing you thoroughly. For he has seen what you confess and what you hide. Again, he mends your broken bones and makes for you a clean heart, comes to comfort you again, comes with his Holy Spirit to renew the spirit in you, calling you to sing of all your loving God has done for you. <laughs> 